you're basically going to go through clear OAuth, uh, authorize TweetStream to go out into your accounts. Um, TweetStream is going to connect to Twitter through all your different accounts, you pull down pretty much all your Twitter information, all your messages, uh, every time somebody else mentions you, uh, all your friends and some of their details, all your direct messages. And it's going to pull them all together, not just one account, several accounts in one place. And that's where we can give that, that back to you in a, in a nice package and start crunching some of those numbers. So again, as, you, as, you, as we collect all the information, who's talking about you, all the different mentions, you can start comparing one Twitter account, say your personal Twitter account, with your business Twitter account. And you can start making those, those connections. <laughs> Well, I understand that some aggregators in the past found what would look for the service on sites like that. Uh, do you guys have a plan to avoid the issues if you're like, you know, Twitter thinks that you're feeding a business model or service? So Zach might jump under this, um, but the, the, the main purpose of the downstream really is about your data. And, and while some services need to try to erect a little bit more solid walls, the, the movement is towards that open focus. And even Facebook, where we can develop a relationship with them on a business level, you know, the, the information is the person's. It's not Facebook's. Um, they got in that you know, trouble a few, few months ago, I think it was, uh, on that very fact. So we are seeing that the services that we're working with, that we're pulling from, are moving toward that, that open API. We're certainly not wanting to compete for these services. We're actually encouraging you to continue using them. This is a great to is something. I've seen security? Certainly, definitely, 100%. Um, it is your data. <laughs> it is, it is, it is, it is you your data. Right, yeah. um, it, it is your data. It's your life. Um, some services will have some very sensitive information. Um, we're still trying to work out some of the <coughs> models where we can pull out some interesting insights without having it personally identified. And of course, any delivery model can be encrypted to the best of our abilities. We also took the stance that we are not going down the business model of just reselling their information. We recognize this is a big trust to you know, help give us a good piece of money. So we're going to give that back to you and not sell that. Right? <coughs> so we're going to organize someone's digital line. How do you, so it's all consolidated in one place? How do you organize it just when say you access that digital life is like your stuff and going to do anything? Yeah, so we are still working some of the some of the uh, the, the big ideas around that. Uh, we talked about different you know, galleries or or different books or just different ways of presenting that information. Um, our big big thing is that initially we have to it's gonna be it's all about the data. Um, so whether we organize all your contextual data in one place all your network based your relationships in one place. Um, you got all your images or all your videos in one place. You know, we're not going to take strict divide lines between services. It's more about the, the data itself. Sorry. Do you compare it to a uh, tweet deck? Is it going to be like web based so like so 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 the the interface that we are going with uh, right out the gate is going to be web based. Uh, but again it is it is all about that that closing that loop. Do you currently have customers? We will tomorrow. tomorrow. <laughs> we also. <laughs> <laughs> so, so TeamStream will be launching uh, tomorrow. <laughs> Thank you very much. Just last month, the Wall Street Journal 
put out a report saying that 77% of the Freelancers Union Association members, which is 120,000 members nationwide, reported that they had a problem with at least one non-paying client that year. Who here has ever experienced or had problems with non-paying clients or currently has? A lot of us. That's right. And it's, <laughs> it's frustrating. It really is frustrating because the problem is a lot of us are dealing with these smaller amounts, typically less than eight to $10,000. And yeah, we can go and hire an attorney, but by the time we drag them into court, we're already paying two to three times that amount in legal fees. Or we can go and hire a debt collection agency, but even at that, if they take you know, that $2,500 invoice, they're taking 60%, and the math just doesn't work out too well. So Public Collections is here to give those smaller amounts a cost-effective solution for collecting that payment. What collection, Public Collections is doing is bringing the person that is owed money and the person that owes money together, and we're giving them a deadline. We're saying you have 15 days in order to resolve your dispute. And if you can't resolve the dispute in 15 days, then you get posted public on the Public Collections website for everyone to see. So how does this work exactly? Well, let's say I'm owed $1,200 from a particular client. I can go to the Public Collections homepage and click Create a Claim. And in just a few short minutes, I can put the business contact person's information there, the description of the case, the amount that it's owed. I can even upload emails stating that, hey, we agreed on this uh, rate of service and for this type of work. Now what Public Collections will do is it will take this information and package it up nicely and send an email to that non-paying client. And the non-paying client will receive that and it's going to tell them, you have 15 days to come talk to Cam and resolve this. Now Public Collections doesn't care how you resolve it as long as you're, you're satisfied with the resolution. Now after 15 days, I'll get an email back saying, was this dispute resolved? If yes, then nothing gets recorded or posted public on the Public Collections website. So that's the incentive for that non-paying client to figure something out and to, re and to pay me or resolve it up the dispute. If not, it gets posted on the Public Collections website. And here we have an example of a company, if you were to do a search on My eGolf, My eGolf currently owes $11,000 to two companies. And you can see uh, among those two companies how much that is, the description of the case, the attempts, but you'll also see the debtor's response, because in fact, you know, the debtor might have a good reason why he didn't pay or didn't pay all of it. You also see in the upper right hand corner that my dog, <laughs> yeah, he owes money, but he currently is owed money as well. And you can click that and you'll see this web effect of all of these stories that we have of these non-paying clients. Now we charge $29.95 to submit a claim. And this is low enough so that even those $200 invoices have a cost effective solution to go after. The, the sole reason, or the, the fact that you have to put your credit card information down verifies you as a person who's submitting the claim. And we have, we have many, many discussions with lots of attorneys about fraudulent claims, and this is a big issue. And the fact that we verify through your credit card who you are and we can attach your name to that, we have processes in place that if in fact it is fraudulent, then we have steps and resources to the other party to take the necessary actions to uh, resolve that. Now we hope to release uh, a market ready beta this sometime this fall, possibly in a couple weeks. Uh, our current lead developer had a baby yesterday, and so he's a little MIA for the moment, but once he gets back on his feet, this will be ready to go. Yes, we are currently seeking for additional investment to get us to that market ready application as well as to develop uh, further feature sets like sending a certified mail, uh, certified letter through the mail so that you can receive an electronic return receipt that the debtor or your non paying client actually received that instead of an email and various other things. Uh, so now that I told you my story, we would like to hear your story because that's what's going to make public collections successful. So if we all tell our stories, we all kind of expose these non paying clients, uh, it's going to help us do two things. One, it's going to help you collect those those lower amounts, but it's also going to help all of us make better informed decisions in who we choose to do business with, because we're going to be able to pick out those non-paying clients. Again, my name is Camden Breed. Uh, thank you, Doug, for this uh, wonderful opportunity, and I'd like to take this time and open up to any questions you might have. Why is the Freelancers Union not already doing this? No idea. Well, the, the Wall Street Journal put out an article about this problem that they've had. 
and they offered, you know, solutions like that, you know, try to hire an attorney, but it's not cost effective. They gave some tips, but none of them were worth the value. What do you do about the situation where, I don't know how often this might occur, but uh, the, the, the person posting the debt uh, poses something that is simply not true? That it, gets, that it gets put publicly on there because it never gets resolved. So what if your system, the, the, person, the person never sends a response back or whatever it is, and it just gets put online, the person doesn't find out, doesn't get the email until uh, two years later, or a year later, or months later when you resolve it, and everyone's saying, you know, we don't want to do business with you because of this, their reputation is tarnished because, you know, they're on Google now. Yep. That's yeah. a project thing that's you know very illegal uh, to do that on any means. Um, and so we have this process in place to say, you know, if you see this and say this is what explained, we're going to have you know a process to help uh, you know, we have to go in and take that down. We figure out, we have a process in place to you know, say, hey, you know, let's you know dig into this claim a little bit further. We're also going to add additional services, so it's not just doing just an email. Uh, so along with the email, we should pay a minute to get lost. I don't want you to spend a lot of time to make sure that we're going to expand it. also things like certified mail. Um, so that it, at that point, you actually would wait to the person who you can notify an individual that they have to sign off on it. So we know you get it. Um, and that would be kind of like running through the table that you can actually be notified. We are looking at additional process, but as we move forward, it's all most from the same topic. Fraud is a critical offense, so we're going to publicize that on our website to make sure that there's I love your idea. An idea you ought to consider looking at is arbitration is exploding. If you had an online arbitration model where they could opt in and pay 50 bucks to have an op, you know, somebody mediate the resolution. You could have a whole other revenue stream. Yeah, we, uh, we, have, uh, we know of someone that's doing exactly that. It's been slow to you know, get off the ground. It, it isn't, you know, a I like what you're leading with. That's easier to deal with. But, but right. But actually, on that point, um, we actually do have a, a pretty partnership with a an organization called SellToday.com. And SellToday.com is $99 to actually do the online arbitration. So we're working with them to actually integrate in if your claim was not resolved and it didn't go public. You, you have the next steps, which that may not be for the rest, but for me, it's more important. And I have a software company that can manage your uh, expedited letters and help you optimize the lowest cost model. To get out there. <laughs> uh, um, sorry, <laughs> one more. Ladies first, there you go. Um, first of all, I love any kind of strategy based on public information. In order for this to work, it has to be visible, right? So, what are your strategies to make sure that these things are visible? So that the claims um, of non payment are visible. Well, again, the, the model itself is you don't pay within the 50 days it becomes posted public. Um, and we don't post that public if you pay within the 15 days. I think what you're saying possibly is, is there a tactic that you're using to try to get this out there to any kind of the place people go to, to confirm that? Right, either advertising to check, <laughs> so a place where people go to check out companies first, like the Better Business Bureau, or boosting your Google rankings, or what are, you, what are your strategies to make sure your service is visible? So, so on, on our side, uh, we actually have a couple of fun things we're excited about. We're trying to figure out the legality and all this thing, but um, <laughs> one thing actually is for additional dollar, you can donate to a billboard. Um, and once you found a billboard, you can put money in your local area. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're also working a lot of um, you know, more traditional services. We um, actually have a lot of chamber of conferences across the country. are extremely excited about this. We had a chance to pitch to a few of them. They're all in the help with this cost, and primarily because they also do a lot of mediation as well. Um, so chamber of conference is in their best interest that these issues are resolved. There's a potential model to encourage that in the process. We've done some little things where once I submit a claim, you know, it's not very hard to do with this. So we are uh, working on um, all the different models. I'm personally excited with the billboard. Um, I'll be able to that soon. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and I'll be available afterwards to answer, answer any additional questions. I'll pass it on to Nick.
Dominic Schwab, CEO and co-founder of Avetto.com. For the last 10 years, we've had this problem. We've had more and more communication services appear. Services like Facebook, Twitter, yeah, you get the idea, right? And millions and millions of people have joined these services because their friends are located on these services. Now, taking into account people who use email, instant messaging, and online news, and you'll find that you're looking at almost the entire internet. That's about 1.6 billion people. Many of whom use multiple services. They communicate through multiple ways online with their family, their friends, their coworkers, people even across the world. So at Rivetto, we wanted to revolutionize and simplify online communication. We wanted to provide a service where you can aggregate all the ways you communicate online, as well as syndicate a message across all those places. Let me give you a personal example. In my life, on a typical day, I have about nine services or windows open that I communicate with people around me. Now, I could use traditional means by, like Google Reader, FriendFeed, Mebo, and Microsoft, Out or, excuse me, Microsoft Outlook to basically take these nine and condense it down to four. But that problem still exists. I still have to manage those four different windows, those four different applications for how I communicate online. So at Rivetto, we thought, why can't we simplify it even more? Why can't we take the four and condense it down to one? And that's Rebecca, simplifying online communication. They can do this for free for a personal account. You can manage all your communication services like social networks, instant messaging, email, and online news. But we also realized that businesses would also find the service useful. So we provide additional tools through our corporate accounts for only $49.95 per month. They get tools like keyword monitoring so they can see who is talking about their brand from various places. Track links so they can see what links they posted and which ones are most popular. Provide network specific statistics so they can see who's talking about my brand more. People on Facebook, people on Twitter. What's being posted more? Videos about my brand or pictures on Twitter? And also multi-user access so a whole team can manage a brand. We invite you to try out our private beta and give us feedback at rebeto.com slash a2meetup. Feel free to shoot us an email or call us to provide feedback. If I have time, I'll give it a short demo here. Alright, looks a little distorted because of the resolution, but bear with me here. When you log in, you'll see two different window panes here. On the left, you see the status quo. The status quo contains all the information coming in. People trying to contact you. So, for example, Tim Jones, I'm following him on Twitter. I see his posting. It's all almost in real time. And I can filter it to see the content that I want to see at any given moment. Now, if I want to post a status update to say Facebook or Twitter, I can do that through the quick post. I simply select where I want the message to go. Type in my message. Click set. <coughs> you receive verification that you picked up. <laughs> Anyhow, on the bottom it says cancel. Yeah, I see that. It's going on the network. Yeah, I think the network should be off. Anyhow, so if you want to post a, a longer message rather than a status update, we have the compose feature on the right. What that does is allows you to post basically an entire blog post or some <laughs> other longer message. Um, as well, you could also post video, pictures, basically any type of way you would communicate, you can do it through Rivetto. And it's absolutely transparent. So nobody really knows that you're using Rivetto. They just get the message. And it's not kept locally. It's kept on the networks that you added. And adding a network is pretty simple. You just click on settings. Of course, it's not going to work. So, we'll skip that one. <laughs> That's all. <laughs> Questions? Yeah. Um, what's wrong with FriendFeed? FriendFeed is only aggregating social networks and news feeds. So, if I actually uh, got a slide for that one. Sweet. <laughs> 
Yeah, yeah, I don't know. Maybe not. Maybe Facebook will turn into Maybe. So here you can see a comparison of different websites that provide various features that we have in Roboto. FriendFeed only adheres to social networks and news sources. You can aggregate those sources and you can post to them. Whereas Roboto focuses on not just the social networks. We also aggregate email, also allow you to communicate through instant messaging, and able to track links and keyword content. So we provide more than what FriendFeed. Why do you think this was made with uh, Google Wave? That's a question we get pretty often. Google Wave was made as, what would Google make if they were to remake email? And basically what they came up with is a real-time protocol for people to communicate to multiple sources. So essentially, Rivetto could take Google Wave and integrate it into our site, and Google Wave could take Rivetto and integrate into Google Wave. So it's more of a partnership opportunity rather than a competitive opportunity. Do you have any partnerships with any of these websites, or are you just piggybacking? I guess you could say we're piggybacking, but they provide an API so we can actually go out and get that information and post these networks without breaking any legal contracts or anything like that. More questions? So if I post a Twitter, does it say from Roberto? You said it doesn't, but I don't see why you wouldn't have that. It, it'll say, like, if you were to post from front feed, you'll get that little front feed URL. I don't know if you've seen that. Yeah. We don't do that. But yeah, it'll say, you know, from the application which we were better.
The backbone of our group are our regional offices. We have 12 regional offices across the state. Every county is represented by a regional office. So you can go onto our website, misbtdc.org. You can look at the menu and you can find your county and it will tell you where your regional headquarters is as well as where your regional satellite offices may be because some of our counties are quite large and so you have more than one office there. Um, here, Region 12, Washington Community College is your headquarters for this area. Here are some of the training topics. We do a lot um, of programs. These are more of the classes when I talk about training. The entrepreneurial series, um, these are held throughout the state of Michigan at the regional offices. And all you got to do is go to that website, do the drop down menu, and you'll find out what you're being offered. And you can see there are a lot of the basics. This is where we kind of, you know, really start with basic businesses and teach them the nuts and bolts of how to get a business started. <coughs> From how to write your business plan to how to market your business, legal issues that you need to be aware of as a startup, fundamentals of finance, how to do financial projections, and how to do cash flow management. These are really well done in a group setting because it's basic information. It's almost like going to school. We just give the training and it serves as a good foundation for them, the company, to come and engage with one of our counselors for one-on-one -on -one counseling on an individual level that will be very specific to your company. There are a variety of programs that we <coughs> offer, though, that go over and above that. One example is Fast Track New Venture. That is a program that we are running here in the state of Michigan with the Michigan Works Program. It's the No Worker Left Behind. And we are, um, we did a pilot project in Ottawa County, had 50 participants and 10 new businesses. And we are rolling this out into other areas. So if you are a dislocated worker or you know a dislocated worker, let us know and we'll find out when this program might be in their area. We do get results. We're very proud of the statistics that we're able to show. We um, do have responsibility to prove to our stakeholders that we make a difference in small business. And so we track our client companies and ask them for information. And these are some of the things that we learned. In 2008 alone, we served over 5,500 clients in the state of Michigan. 360 businesses were started that we helped assist. A lot of jobs were created, and over $235 million of capital was put behind those businesses that formed. We're very proud of those numbers, and we're very proud of those businesses as they keep on flourishing. We also have a variety of other programs that are available. One is called Accelerating Michigan's Entrepreneurs. It has its own website, so if you're interested in that, notice the website is a little different. It's a virtual business incubator. If anyone has heard of a business incubator, you know what those are. There's several of them here on the east side of the state. They're all over the state of Michigan. There are places where small businesses can go and get a lot of um, support and assistance in a networked environment. Here, it's virtual. So uh, say, for example, in the Upper Peninsula, very rural, it's very rugged. Sometimes it's hard for a startup company to get to the place where they're going to need counseling and consulting. They can do it online. There's a lot of wiki documents that get shared, and they do a lot of online collaboration, webinars, and other things like that, go to meetings. And so the business owner and the client and the consultant are actually engaged one-on-one -on -one in real time in the virtual incubator. There's a brand new program. I threw this slide together. I hope my boss doesn't get mad. It's the only one I threw in on my own, this other than this CAN program. Um, we have the growth group. It's a brand new program rolling out, maybe not applicable to a lot of the companies here yet, but it will be. This is designed for growth companies as they begin to explode and experience those changes that come with rapid growth. They're looking for companies that, in business, that have been in business for about three years or so, that have 9 to 99 employees and have annual sales at or greater than a million dollars. And they need to be facing some growth issues. Maybe they've got HR issues coming on now as they begin to grow and try to manage the addition of new people into the team. Maybe they're having market issues as they've kind of gone past their initial market and they're trying to figure out how to expand into new markets. Or maybe they just got capital, capital issues. How do we get the money that we need to keep this growth going? And that's what the G2 program is going to be working with. So if you know any companies that fit that model, let me know and I'll direct them to the right people. This is what I do. We are the technology group. There are nine of us around the state of Michigan. <coughs> we do have a statewide presence, and we do partner with a lot of organizations around the state. So here in Ann Arbor, we're with Ann Arbor Spark, we're with Tech Town. Um, I can't even begin to list them all. There's just, I think there's a slide later. <laughs> we'll see some of them. And our team mission is to help Michigan transition to an innovation-based economy. We create successful technology, technology companies through direct assistance. So we don't, my team, I don't do a lot of training. And I don't do really any research. I do the one-on-one -on -one consulting because that's what our team is engaged with. We partner. 
with our regional offices to provide those other resources. Um, we do have four technology sectors that we focus on. Because we are, our technology group is primarily, is entirely funded by the state of Michigan, by the MEDC, we focus only on the sectors identified by the governor. So we've got life science, alternative energy, advanced automotive manufacturing materials, and homeland security. Honestly, when you look at that, it's hard to think of a business that we can't shoehorn into one of these sectors. So if you've got a technology business, odds are we're going to be able to help you. We're looking for kind of gazelle types of companies that have huge markets out there, huge market potential, that are going to need a lot of capital. They're probably going to go after venture capital financing, and there's going to be an exit. So we're looking for companies that are probably going to sell at some point to um, another company, or perhaps go IPO. You know, the window's got to open one of these days. We like to think that we get results. Um, in 2008, the tech team itself, I showed you data earlier from the entire network. This is simply from our tech team. Um, we contributed over 6,800 consulting hours directly one-on-one -on -one with our client companies. Remember, this is only nine people. Actually, it's only eight because our director does not do a lot of counseling anymore. He's so busy managing all the things that we're doing. This is um, eight people pretty much doing this. 282 jobs were created, and our companies on the technology side generated over $54 million in capital. And that's primarily venture capital. So we're pretty proud of that number, too. There's venture capital in Michigan. It's just kind of hard to find. It's kind of hard to rest out of the hands of the VCs. But we can help you do that. Oh, look at that. We have animation. Like I told you, this is my slideshow. OK. We do have a pretty uh, talented team, I like to think. We were launched in 2002, so the team has been around for a while. We're pretty seasoned. Many of the technology consultants that we have on board have been around since the very beginning. I'm probably the newest one, and I've been around for a year and a half with the SBTDC. I've been doing this for a long time before that, but with the team, I'm new. Um, we were the second SBDC in the country to receive the technology designation. There is an accreditation process that every state must go through to get that T designation. We were the second. We are recognized nationally with our technology program as a best practices state, and our leadership goes to other states and teaches other states how to do what we do here in Michigan. And we do work in conjunction with our regional offices very closely. So you, not just, you don't just get the technology team, but you get the regional offices hand in hand. This is who we are. These are all the people. As you can see, we've got some high-powered folks up there. We've got physicists, attorneys, engineers. We're covering a variety of sectors. We like to think that we have at least one person on our team who can address pretty much any issue that, that a small company may have in the technology sector and some of the things that we can help with. You guys can read it, so I'm not going to go over it. What kinds of things do we do? You say you can have a technology company, but what does that mean? SBIR, STTR assistance. Does anybody know? Hands, people know what that means? SBIR, STTR. Okay, we got a few, but not many. Okay. SBIR is a federal program, Small Business Innovation Research. STTR is Small Business Technology Transfer Research. They're pretty much one and the same. They're federal grants. And they're coming down through um, a lot of the agencies. National Institutes of Health, National Science Foundation, Department of Defense, Department of Energy, all those groups have money that they give away to companies that are doing innovative technology development. And we've got a pretty good track record for the companies that will come in and engage with us and work with us, where we can help you increase your odds of getting funding. It's very competitive, it's very difficult to get the money, but if you can get it, it's free money. You gotta love that. We do this in collaboration with the Ann Arbor Company, uh, Biotechnology Business Consultants, actually they, it's just BDC. Uh, BBC is a company here in Ann Arbor that assists with this, and they are fabulous, and they are a partner with us, so when you work with us on SBIR, STTR, you not only get our consultant, Anna Beer, but you also get the BBC team as well. Angel and Venture Capital Assistance, primarily what we do there is we'll help you get your business plan in order, we'll help you get your presentation ready, we'll do pitch preparation, and we'll help you practice it and get you ready, and then when you're ready, we will open the doors. We know most of the VCs and the angels in the state of Michigan, and we feel that you're ready and it's a good fit. We can make some phone calls and we can usually get you in. And we'll help <coughs> you get ready to present at events, like this one. So if you're thinking you want to present here one day, come see me, we'll get you set up. <coughs> Commercialization planning. Technology road mapping is a really cool tool that we use. I'm still learning it. In fact, I'll be doing it tomorrow with one of my colleagues over um, at Schoolcraft College with the company. And it was developed out of General Motors. 
by one of the gentlemen that was in charge of doing technology development. And it is a way to visualize your technology as it moves through all the factors that it has to move into to be successful. And it's it incorporates a lot of the features. So it's not just the technology side, but it's the business side, it's the marketing side, and it's kind of a layered look at how you move your technology from one end to the next. Really cool feature. It takes several days. This isn't just a one hour thing. It, it takes a lot of time. Due diligence and company assessments, we come with management team assistance. Sometimes with a technology company, we've got a brilliant technological founder who really doesn't get the business and they don't really understand it and they don't really want to. That's okay. We can help identify CEO potential candidates or maybe the company's really going along well and now it's time for marketing. I got a life science company that's looking for a marketing guru in a specific life sciences sector. We're helping them find the appropriate person. Uh, strategic alliance building, networking assistance, that's probably my forte. Um, I know a lot of folks around the state and if you need to know somebody, I can probably introduce you. Ah, here we go. These are some of the groups that we work with. Just let y'all look at that. As you can see, we are all over the state. We have partners all over the state of Michigan. We work with anybody. Like we have bracelets, right? We sing with everybody. So, if you are engaged with any one of these groups, you can be engaged with us. All it takes, you know, is a phone call or an email. There is a due diligence process, or I'm sorry, there's there's like a vetting process that we go through because there are only um, nine of us on the technology team. Sometimes we can't take every company that comes to us for assistance. So usually we will sit down with you, we will talk with you, and we'll find out whether or not your company is gonna be served well by what we have to offer. Um, and if so, great, we'll work with you. If not, we don't just leave you hanging. We will connect you with other resources that we feel can serve you best. Our primary goal is to make sure that the business gets what it needs. If we can't provide it, we will find someone that can. So those are just some examples. Phil Tapley is our uh, technology team leader, our fearless leader. Some of you may know Phil. He is based here in Ann Arbor. He's been around for a long time and he does a fabulous job. You've got his information there. And then you have me just because I happen to be here today. If you are a technology company looking for assistance, it might be best to go through through Phil first, or actually through your regional office. Um, Charlie, are you here? No, I to be here. Um, but your regional office, if you, I can help you with that. Find your website, find your regional office, go through them. They can do some assessment, determine which counselor can help you best, and who feel the appropriate technology consultant. That's the, the best way to go. And with that said, I went through that pretty darn quick. So we have lots of time for question and answer because that's usually where people. Oh yeah, okay, now I'm on the spot. Now I'm on my own. Yeah. That last slide that you put up on the organizations. Mm -hmm. how, how does your charter or target audience similar or different than the smart zone? The smart zones? It's the same. It's, it's probably exactly the same. same. Mm -hmm. We're a partner with the smart zones. The smart zones, you know, are state designated areas by the MEDC. There was an application process. There are only so many smart zones in the state of Michigan, so they're limited as to how many there can be. We try to work um, closely with those. In fact, before I joined the SBTDC, I was with the Kalamazoo Smart Zone. And, and that's how I got to know the SBTDC, was working with them with my client companies. We just say we're another resource. To all of those entities out there, we don't try to replace what they do, we just try to add to it. So if they're already working with a company in a certain area, and the company simply needs additional assistance somewhere else, we try to come in and, and fill that niche that that company needs. That's it. You're not going to let me out that easy. Another question. Let's see what a good job I did. Just thoroughly explain everything else I'm talking about, right? Oh, uh, oh good. Go ahead. Give me a question. I feel bad. It's <laughs> <laughs> uh, because I did a great job presenting. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, what I was wondering is, can you give us some examples of some technology companies that you have up in the past that you've been successful? Oh, God. I knew you were going to ask me that. Wow. <laughs> See, you didn't really want any questions. Um, <laughs> oh, what are some of we've worked on? Like I said, I'm the newbie with the group, so I haven't been around for a lot of them. We have been working with, I need to go back to my success stories. You know what? I think Advanced Battery Concepts is one that we have worked with. I think they're from around this area, Advanced Battery Concepts. Um, on my side, some of the clients I've worked with, I've been working, um, in the past I've worked with Asperion, Therapeutics, which has now been reinvented and then they're going forward again. Um, IGEA, the company here locally I've worked with. Um, oh, Electrojet. 
and Bob Justin Flyers. Uh, also coming up, uh, we are putting together the Entrepreneurs Foundation of Ann Arbor. Uh, the first founding meeting of that is going to be probably in the next two weeks. Um, we're and flying up a representative from the Upper Foundation of Central Texas in Austin who will be helping us uh, kind of get organized. And um, at any rate, we are looking for founding members. Um, just to refresh from everything last night, the structure of this foundation is that uh, we get young tech companies to participate in community philanthropy through an equity grant. Typically, uh, you know, up to a percent of the company in the form of a warrant for common stock or a percentage of LLC. Um, that's an endowment to the community that says, if my company does well, the community will do well. And um, we're looking for folks that are willing to be founding trustees, uh, basically paying the fund, but also founding companies who are willing to basically uh, 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 bring such a warrant right now. And so at any rate, um, we're bringing it together shortly, and let me know if you uh, if you're interested. Uh, my email is uh, Doug Snowman, uh, monkey uh, We also have two new sites uh, set up, sort of affiliated with the, the new tech meetup. up. Uh, one is a job site that's free to post to. And so, um, uh, and I can actually demo that briefly too. Um, <coughs> uh, if you have any uh, jobs you'd like to post, or um, uh, or projects uh, even that you'd like to do, like uh, even part time work, uh, feel free to post it here. It's it's all free. You don't have to pay anything to do it, and uh, it also you think it's cross posted to uh, Craigslist automatically. Um, but at any rate, uh, there are a few folks using it already. Um, uh, so anyway, feel free to check that out. And there's also the A2 to the news, uh, the A2 Tech uh, website. Um, both of which are now linked off of the main A2 Tech or uh, website. Um, and this is basically a uh, a big like or a Reddit like um, social news aggregator. So uh, feel free to post news, comments, and uh, uh, have conversations and arguments on there. Yes. And um, otherwise, uh, for other events that are going on in the community, we do have both the community calendar at the ATU New Tech site as well as the ACP site. Are there any other any other events or any other things anyone wants to announce? Yes. Um, the Great Lakes Entrepreneurs Quest is uh, starting their business plan registration, a business plan competition starting August 24th. Just go to dlq.org. All right. I have wires for that too. He has one, one thing, actually, I don't know the exact date, but the momentum program that we're actually a part of, um, the first time they're actually in their second year, I think registration starts in September, late September. Um, so I'll just give some information to you on the ATU website. But I'm um, really looking for the application, they're really going to accept about five. So if you're looking for small funding, $15,000, uh, you can help you through the whole process. Uh, some more West Michigan love. Uh, there's a bar kick going on this weekend. It's scheduled for a while. Uh, Friday and Saturday over on uh, Grand Rapids, California. So, our NPR network. Anything else? Uh, on behalf of some other companies I'm, I'm helping out, uh, there are a number of folks that are hiring for mobile developer positions. So if anyone has any interest in working for a at one app company, there are at least two that are actively hiring full-time folks. Uh, one is Nutshell, the other is Moviata. Uh, Moviata is the maker of Flight Track Pro, the number one app on the iTunes or iPhone uh, app store, which uh, has grossed about a million since January. Uh, anyway, he's looking to hire about three people. Um, I'm trying to figure if there's anything else. Anything else I know, I post to the ATP, or the, the jobs that you can check the work site. So if you think about it. I'm with Domino's Pizza, director of e-commerce, and we're hiring right now as well. So web developers, back-end developers. Um, Domino's.com, pizza order, and pizza tracker. It, it's pretty good stuff. It's not typical corporate IT stuff, so come see me. And all the pizza. <laughs> 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 It's got to be there in 30 minutes. Or